I think this video is important to answer the question about this pirate that I've married. Where does Robinson come from? Fishing and video games took up like 80% of my childhood. <laughs> Was that the first time you went diving? Yeah, that's the first time we went diving and my galan with the family friend and it completely got me hooked and I haven't done that much diving but I do as much as I can. It's it's incredible. Uh <laughs> bien tes cheveux. Il dit que son masque prend de l'eau. Lâchez tout What did you see? Hmm? What did you see? Do you remember what you saw? Yeah, lots of small fish and small groupers. And... C'était bien, Robbie. Robinson, c'était bien. The thing I remember the most is how dry my mouth came. I was like almost sticking shredding the seawater. Or should I wait until? Oh, it made your mouth really dry. Yeah, when you dive, your mouth gets super dry. It's in... Oh, I didn't know that. Once in a while, when. You travel a lot, you have to do visa runs. And we did quite a few between Thailand and and Burma. Thailand Burma, Thailand Cambodia, we I think we did Thailand Malaysia. Very often we did those visa runs. Cheese. Nice place to have a snake. Oh nice. Uh, there's Robinson. Hi, Robinson. Yeah. yeah. Hi. How are you? Fine. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna kill ya. Okay, here's another crew member. This is uh, Addison, and he's playing with Robinson here, and they're probably gonna beat the crap out of each other with uh, guns and sticks. We're not gonna beat each other up. We're only things. gonna fight each cops and robbers. Uh, he's a robber on the hunt. Okay. All right. Okay. Pirates and something. Yeah. to Chag was like, I did so many that I don't remember which one I did what on which. Quite a few times, I'm not sure even which one, which time is which anymore. Been there so many times, back and forth. Second 
humans are as intelligent as humans, if not more so. They do have large brains for their body size, use language, and are easily trained by humans. Mostly, you know, you go fishing, you prepare your fish, you cook, you clean. Mom tried desperately to try to school us very bravely, you know. <laughs> it's hard to keep kids on the boat when there is when you're in Chagos, so we always wanted to go fishing and we didn't want to hear it. Kids, come and learn something. Yeah, right. It was very hard for my mother to try to teach us something. We were just like running away. And then many things we learned. Fuck McDonald's things. But most of the one sailing. Was it only rich people traveling? No. You had you had your your big rituals on big boats, but it wasn't only rich people traveling. No. No. You had all types of people traveling: rich, poor, small, big. That was the beauty about it, actually. You met all sorts of people. You met people that had no engine, no GPS, no nothing. They would just travel and go with the flow and hippies and. Trees. Holding a carpet like this one would be nice. Is it soft like a carpet? Oh yeah, even better. Soft. I like to slip on this. In Chagos, the, the thing was basically it was very easy to go. They were very relaxed about both people going there, and then the Iraq 9/11 happened, and usually came every every month, every three months, depending what was on their mood. And then one day they didn't show up at all for a while, and we were in Chagos for a bit, expecting them to 
show up and be like, oh, you guys have to do this or that. And usually you paid like a small amount of money every every once in a while to stay in Chagos and they never showed up almost for a year when there was the 9 when there was the 9 11. Robinson, come out! Am I? I am. And they would send a plane to see who was there. They didn't have the resources apparently, which I find hard to believe. So they would come usually with boats, but they just decided to come with the plane. Yeah. You will see you will see the, those big planes just so they just surveyed the area and you would see also the the fighter jets once in a while they would have a military exercises and you just see the fighter jets flying around chasing each other you show up and you stay there and whenever the English showed up they would ask you oh, when did you come and usually you were full you're like oh I've been here so and so because they know they know very well <laughs> it's unbelievable they know everything we did we knew everything and yeah, they, you, they would come and they would stamp your passports. I don't know, I don't know if they stamped the passport. I don't think we ever had like Chagos. No, they would stamp our passports. There was a Chagos stamp at one point. Now they, they pre give a visa for you and the boat now. C'est quoi ça? Les poches de mer. Ooh, Were there a lot of hippie people raising kids, kids there? Yeah. It was quite a large community of, bo of boaters living there. There was actually quite, there was like 60 boats that literally lived there, that were there all, all year round. They spent six months there, six months in Thailand, or they would go Thailand, Chagos, Madagascar, Chagos, Thailand, and they would go back, then they, they would go back and forth. Well, we, we would usually stay from four to four or five months usually. One well, of the last times I was there, I spent almost a year there. Thirteen months. But you went to Maldives or something to get food? Or? Yeah, we went uh, a, few a few days last atoll down in the Maldives, so we went and got some food for a few days. Mostly fuel. Fuel always goes fast. That's the number one thing that goes is your, f is your fuel. Ah, Pio. <laughs> Pio was just a bird I found on the floor in Chagos and I was young and naive and I was like, oh, it lost its mother, it lost its mother, it's in the floor, no one's taking care of it. Ready? 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 <laughs> Most birds on islands do make their young on the shore and I end up having to raise the little bird. They do get lost once in a while, like you can see the their mothers stop feeding them, they get skinny and they get weak and... What do you think? Hmm? Do you think that was the case? 
Uh, I don't know because it looked quite weak when I found it. I, I caught it very easily. Mm -hmm. Like it let it let itself. Usually, if they if they're healthy, they don't let themselves be caught very easily. And this one, I, I just I just picked it up. I mean, it was didn't run very far and and yeah, and I raised it and it eats tons and tons of fish and it's fin it end up molting and it still wouldn't cat it wouldn't still wouldn't fly and. I finally taught it how to fly by towing it up and down and then it would follow us around when we went on the dinghy zooming around and yeah one day the the tuna came next to the boat and with the the cloud of its the same species and he went out and he managed to fish and he went on his way <laughs> Let go. Yeah, Sometimes you get stuck with the teeth on the rope and that you catch them. We got it! We got it! Eh? È arrivata una foca sulla barca. Well, since my time in Chagos, I went to school in India for a few years and uh, I went back to Europe for a while to visit family. Then I went to South Africa, then came back to India, then went back to Switzerland, then took care of my, da my father's boat for a few years. We went to Madagascar and came back and then I took care of my uncle's boat. Nice and shiny. Doesn't sound very good without grease. Mm -hmm. I hate grease. <laughs> 